does creating the physical change through JKATM support emotional well-being, creative thinking, that direction of things? Everybody knows that, that physical activity, different types of physical activity create changes in chemicals in the brain that make people feel better, okay? So you have to create some kind of a change in movement and then you can create change in certain emotional domains, cognitive domains, and sensory domains. So there are physical basis in terms of the way that we hold ourselves constantly that create for ourselves sensations of being easier with ourselves, more anxious with ourselves, more stressed with ourselves, more relaxed with ourselves. And everybody knows that if, if you have a certain environment and a certain way that you are with other people or with yourself, you can change your emotional state. I think what people look for is if they have an overall emotional state that they're constantly stuck in, how can they get out of that? That's one of the questions people look for. So I think some of the things that create emotional changes for people are, First of all, some people, if they just, some of these basics of the how to do something, if you just go slow, some people, it's like you have to change gears. If you just go slow huh, and you take a breath, this for some people will make a big difference emotionally just to begin with. And if they can do this five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, they'll get up and they'll say, oh my God, I feel like a load's been taken off. I'm not constantly worrying about this thing. My mind feels easier. This is one thing. Some people are constantly, we talked about reducing effort. Some people are constantly efforting in life in a certain way, with themselves in a certain way, in relationships. They're constantly efforting. Now, if you tell somebody, listen to yourself, that they have to focus inwards, reduce your effort, all of a sudden, some change will come over them. And all of a sudden, they know, I don't have to do this. Oh, my God. And then what will happen is something about this, this way that they do things or feel with themselves, there's like a little space between it. Some people are, feel compulsively always having to do something the correct way, uh, the proper way, the way to please somebody. And anything in an abilities through movement um, a lesson has nothing to do with that. It has only to do with something that you can find, you have to listen to the sensation that makes you feel good, okay? What is your way to listen to yourselves that you will feel good? What is a pleasant sensation? How to listen to a pleasant sensation, okay? And how to listen to your need for that sensation. So um, you can take a breath, you can release, you can reduce your effort. That can be a basis for people. Other people, no. They want to do the movement and feel successful in the movement. This can change their emotional state. I try to take this broadly and I want to, uh, and I try to take it in two different ways. Some people do abilities through movement to not deal with their emotional life. Some people do awareness through movement to not deal with their emotional life. Some people do yoga or meditation. Why is that that they do body-based things not to deal with their emotional? Why? because they can do something and feel like they're doing something better. And then it makes them feel they don't have to go more deeply into dealing with an emotional state that's maybe not good for them, deeply rooted, affected by trauma, attachment aspects that they might have that they have to manage. And what happens is if they feel good and good in their movement, basically they can avoid any issues that you could say are really at a root or more troubling for them emotionally, psychologically, or spiritually, you could talk. And I found that many times, uh, because I've seen many people do this and they seem to be um, developing. And then you see that in, on the emotional side, not at all. They sort of avoid themselves in it. I found that to be able to look into the emotional aspects of, of, of people more deeply, Sometimes this works for people because then they don't have to tell people how they feel. They can listen for themselves. Other times, like you need some kind of a mirroring from the outside. We can't see ourselves 
as ourselves. We always need some type of a, uh, you could say, a, a limbic, a limbic resonance with somebody or a limbic exchange with somebody else to feel, sense ourselves and feel ourselves emotionally to make changes. And we do this through other people. I found that for many people, yes, abilities through movement or awareness through movement can be very useful in light emotions or changing or contact. And sometimes then people need other things. In terms of creating uh, changes long-term for emotions that people want to do, this I, this I really can't speak to. I can see from the changes that I do notice with people, people can change mood, senses of aliveness, relaxedness, anxiousness, uh, joyfulness, um, attentiveness to other people. Any type of a, a, a mechanical lessening of a particular pattern or a network of muscular use, a pattern of behavior, if you can loosen it up a little bit or change it in any way, because in any pattern of activity that's repetitive, there will be some type of an emotional sense of self component. Shift it around, change the network of how it's done a little bit, and you loosen that and the person will feel something else. Many people, when they just feel taller or more upright, they always feel more awake and happy. This is something people get up and they have their eyes brighter and they stand taller and then they just feel absolutely, absolutely easier and lighter and happy for a few moments. Some people, all of a sudden, it's like they drink a glass of alcohol and they just start talking to other people and they feel very open. They, they feel less inhibited. Okay. So um, this is something I, I, I find is, is very common. And it, it's more having to do not with the how of what's being done, but the mechanics of how it's done. Because the mechanics can change in the, the way networks, movement networks or patterns of action or, or movement combinations are put together, strongly or less, more used, less used. And the easier those become, the lighter somebody becomes for a moment. Because you can be very, very flexible and still go back to having difficult moods and difficult emotions. But you can lie down, roll around, do different combinations, and you stand up, you feel easier in gravity. People will feel more enlivened, and bang, they will, they will go off and have a, a change of mood and an enlivened feeling. And, and actually, if you feel more connected to yourself, you will always more feel more connected to other people. When you were talking before about how abilities through movement has this basis of supporting people to find an attachment to themselves. Oh, yes. I would imagine that that also supports over time, not just the temporary mood change, but... No, absolutely. If, if, if I would talk more deeply about it, my work evolved at a certain stage while I was teaching the film. I got very interested in the work of John Bowlby and, and Alan Shore and all the, the, the aspects of self-regulation and attachment, attachment theory. And one of the ways that I describe in abilities through movement is how somebody comes in a particular contact with themselves so that they can, you could say, attach onto themselves and listen to their own needs. That's a very broad thing to say because so many different needs. But people come and they study abilities through movement because they have certain needs that they're either unfulfilled, okay, and they don't know where to find them, and they want to wait to learn how to listen to their needs in themselves, by themselves. And this takes a certain way to go about it. Basically, if you don't know what attachment theories are, there's a way that we, we attach on to, to other people for social needs and emotional needs. And we either have in the large version of we either have secure attachments or insecure. So you can be securely attached to yourself and others, and you can have certain insecurities in the way that you're attached to others. And there are a few different categories. When I, I think about the whole aspect of what it means to be in a regulate yourself in a way, listen to your needs, attach to your inner self in a particular way, securely, then what I would notice is that the, the basis of the attachment is that it's, it's something nonverbal. The basis of all attachment work in early childhood is nonverbal, that somebody outside of you 
listens to your needs that you're expressing non-verbally and somehow fulfills them. Now movement, when you do it with yourself, it's in a non-verbal state with you are with yourself. You don't talk yourself through it. And what happens is you have to listen to the, your own need at that moment, whatever it may be. So, and then what happens is if you're the one that becomes the listening to the need, like somebody else did non-verbally, you're in a certain way mimicking a part of this type of an uh, attachment. Now, there are people that had disorganized attachment um, and um, anxious attachment, all different types of attachment. But the moment that you can listen to any kind of a need of yourself, you actually can sort of redo this type of way that any part of your attachment is if you let yourself feel for yourself what you're feeling at the moment that you're doing and find out it doesn't feel really good and you have to define that for yourself and this feels better. When I do this and it feels better for myself, I'm, the, I'm listening to my need for myself to take care of myself and to feel good how I'm doing it with myself. And then all of a sudden you feel more attached to yourself and whatever emotion relates to how you do that, this will usually more come to the fore, more to the foreground and whatever you would say would be negative goes away or disappears or goes into the background. Now, I don't push people in those directions because I think the, the idea is that people have, as an adult, and I, I, this is something I respect very much when I teach abilities through movement, I look at people as adults that are strong, that can take care of themselves, and that they're resilient to whatever they will listen to and, and, and manage for themselves when they sense it and feel it when they're ready. And I, I've always found that if, if I respect that, people start to grow differently than if I look at people more in a childish way that I have to take care of them and worry about them. Um, and same thing as you, you would do it in, in basic, you would say parenting or, or, or pedagogy. Anything that you can do that helps you adopt better in gravity as an adult. That means going more into the upright and being able to go in any plane of motion at any time, you will feel better emotionally. This is sort of a rule. So a lot of the abilities through movement lessons are engaged around looking how to and the mechanics of how to help people adapt in any way that they can better to gravity. The moment you do this, You'll always get up off the floor. If you do things more in the upright, you'll feel better in gravity. You'll feel better with yourself. It's like 